Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here with brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Take a go out today, see if things came out, see if things are on sale today. Today though, the big releases that come out is uh, Jaws releases on 4K for the first time today. And that one though, there's like the standard edition one, you know, which would be available everywhere like online and in stores and stuff to carry it. You know, the one that has a digi book, but there's also a Best Buy exclusive steelbook edition of that one as well. So that's a really cool uh, steelbook for that one. Also though, um, the releases today is uh, Creepshow Season one that comes out today on a uh, blu-ray I think it's on DVD as well also um, Watchmen the HBO series that releases today uh, also though the end of this video is gonna be a whole bunch of brand new DVD blu-ray and 4k reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys so definitely stay tuned for those some really really cool stuff a bunch of titles from uh, Arrow video some shout factory and scream factory titles and uh, as well as a whole bunch of other really cool things as well and as always too let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs blu-rays and 4ks that I reviewed if you guys have seen Seen them, what you guys thought of them. Also, if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. And fingers crossed in here, you know, that they have everything out. Because like I said, the first Tuesday of the month is, you know, first Tuesday of the month is when, you know, um, Walmart changes out the actual section. But, you know, I've noticed, though, lately, uh, like sometimes now, because like in the actual section they put in, like I was saying, indie horror movies and comedies and all that, but sometimes now, like the second Tuesdays of the month and the third, they change out the actual section as well with a couple more things. They didn't used to do that. It used to be pretty much the actual section would only change the first Tuesday of the month and that was it. Then all the new releases were like on the front. But then now they've kind of changed and put some of the stuff that would be kind of today, you know, throughout the weeks. So I've kind of noticed that. That's one thing they changed, but. Hopefully they have some of the new stuff out. We'll see. If not, though, I'll go to one other Walmart, uh, the one that usually has the stuff, but I wanted to come here first just so I didn't have to, like, backtrack and come back or something like that if that one didn't, but we'll see. But in here, though, I peeked over in the actual section, and it looked like, for the most part, they had most of the new things out. There wasn't, like, a big, you know, studio release, anything big, like last week was Invisible Man. There wasn't a huge, uh, stu like, brand-new studio title that came out or anything like that today. Like I said, the big thing was Jaws 4K, and that's the one I'm not seeing here because when I peeked in the section I saw some new stuff that's the one thing I didn't see so I'm pretty sure they're carry it in store in Walmart I know Walmart doesn't have an exclusive but I feel like they sh will would have that in store might not have too many of it usually though uh, that would be put like right here this is usually where the 4ks get put the new ones at least that's what I've noticed but you always have to really look because in here though they can sometimes just be kind of mixed in in like a totally random spot and everything but over here though uh new release wise though some of the new things that came out here though was this one uh, ancestral world here uh this one released today and this one is on uh, 9.96 for that one as well as this one here called black the blackout invasion earth which i don't know anything about this one if you guys have seen this one though uh, let me know how this one was here like i said this is blackout invasion earth this is a uh, shout factory uh title here other than that, though, uh, this one here, um, Robert the Bruce came out. So I don't know anything about this one. If you guys have seen this one, has Jared Harris in the movie? If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one was. And this one is on 996. Uh, these first three here are all 996. I believe this came out today. These um, Tokyo Grandfathers was today as well as the uh, sound of uh, euphorium for me i'm totally saying that wrong the movie uh, that one's 1796 and then tokyo godfathers is uh, 1696 and this one released today for the first time ever on a uh, blu-ray the john travolta film uh, urban cowboy and this is one i have actually never seen this movie so like let me know how this one was uh, like i said this is the first time on blu-ray i'm really glad that paramount's starting to put out a lot more of their catalog titles as have never come out because soon they're going to be putting out pretty in pink I think that's out like later this month, I believe. Other than that, today, uh, when the uh, when the when calls the heart, finding home, and emotion and a moving picture, that released today. That's 9.96. Urban Cowboy was uh, 14.96. Uh, Watchmen, the series, um, you know, the HBO series, that one came out today on Blu-ray for 34.96. As well as over here, um, I think this was out a little while ago. This is a Walmart exclusive here. The um, the new um, Blues Clues series, because they brought the series back with a new host on this one. And that one is a Walmart exclusive for this one. That one is, is uh, $9.96 for that. Also though, the um, the Harley Quinn, uh, the first season released, and I've heard decent things about this one. If you guys have seen this one though, let me know how uh, this one was. Like I said, I had heard some decent things on this one. 
other than that over here, um, I think this was today, this one coming home for you. I believe this is $9.96. And then Star Trek, the short treks. These ones both released. Their Blu-ray um, version is uh, $19.96, $14.96 for the DVD. Now this is one, I should have a copy of this one coming soon to review. Uh, there's all, the, the one I'm getting is a Steelbook edition, the Blu-ray Steelbook. It's a really pretty cool Steelbook if you guys haven't seen pictures of it. Um, but this one here, I've heard of, like lots of really, really good things about this movie. So I really look forward to checking this out. It's a Shudder exclusive film. And I believe someone was telling me too that Joe Bob Briggs even did a version on Shudder where you can watch him like, you know, hosting throughout this movie on there. But that, like I said, heard really, really good things about this one. So cannot wait to check this out. The other one that came out today, and I ordered a copy of this one because I had a feeling this would be one you would only see the DVD in stores because there's a Blu-ray of it. But it sounded kind of interesting. This um, movie here called uh, Witches in the Woods. And like I said, I read about this one. It sounded actually very interesting. Um, so I definitely mention, like, let you guys know how this one was when I get a copy of this one. Like I said, I ordered that one, so that should be coming pretty soon. Other than that, though, this one might have been today, this um, Wild Kratz Around the World. I think this is like that series, Kratz Creatures, or it might be like a new version of it or something. Other than that over here, I don't see anything else different over here. Like I said, I didn't see Jaws anywhere in here from looking, and it didn't seem like it was in any random spots or anything, but I'll probably go over, though, to the other Walmart real quick and just kind of look inside. Everyone's wanting to touching things. Don't worry. I'm, you know, going to, you know, have sanitizer in the car and everything. Uh, so I'm not touching the phone or anything. I basically just, you know, done all this all in one take. So I put the phone away with the, the phone, you know, the camera away with the hand I'm holding and everything. So those who are kind of wondering that stuff. But other than that, though, that seems to be all the different things that I see in here today, though. One thing though I wanted to make sure to mention as well, I saw down here, they have on um, Blu-ray in here, the collector's edition here of Candyman. So that's really cool to see a Scream Factory title on here. This one doesn't have the uh, slip cover on it, these editions here, but still really cool. And it's only $9.99 uh, for that one. Into the second Walmart we go. Yeah, this one though, I'm glad it didn't come here first. This one doesn't have anything at all. Like here's all the new stuff all totally empty here. I do see some other spots though here for one I didn't see in the other store, Pandemonium. I'm going to be talking about this one at the end of this video. So that one will be available in Walmart. Like I said, I'll be talking about this at the end of this video. Other than that though, like I said, uh, you know, I didn't see Jaws in here uh, and you know, it was all this stuff was empty here, but I didn't even see a spot right here for Jaws. So I'm not sure if they're going to have that in here or in the front. I, like I said, it's probably going to be like around this spot, probably right around here. When I was looking online, it looks like it's going to be $19.99 for the 4K of that one. But yeah, like I was saying, you know, and right here in the front too, I don't see the uh, Creep Show. I mean, not Creep Show, the um, Candyman for $9.99. Like I said, that's a really good price for that one. That's like, an, if you guys have never seen Candyman, I feel like most people have, but that's an absolute must watch. But other than that though, like I said, I don't see anything else in here. Nothing was changed out. They did bring back these uh, slip covers. I think these were out a while ago. Uh, or they might have been out as maybe, I think they were like, I don't think they were ever steel books. I believe they were slip covers, but I, maybe there might be a couple newer ones in here that I might not have remembered, like maybe these Batman ones, but I'm pretty sure I remember seeing these ones all before, I believe so. And, and they don't seem to have, you know, normally they would have like movie money and stuff in them. It doesn't look like they have anything like that. It's just, you know, the movies are not open right now when they would, you know, re-release those ones all, quite often. But other than that, like I was saying, I don't see anything else different or new over here uh, as far as I can tell though. And now let's head to the computer to check out Target's weekly ad to see what things they're advertising uh, this week. But taking a quick look on Target's weekly ad, on here though you see there's nothing new uh, movie related on here. So it doesn't look like they're promoting uh, Jaws 4K. But if any of you guys went inside of um, Target, let me know though if you saw uh, them, you know, them selling Jaws 4K in there or not. But like other than that, like I said, nothing new on here though. Next week though there will be a couple uh, different things coming out in the coming weeks. But yeah, this week though, not too many big uh, releases. And now, though, we're headed to the computer as well to check out Best Buy's weekly ad. And the other thing, though, with Best Buy, I was wondering as well, if any of you guys have heard, is when the store is going to open that, you know, anyone can go inside again. Because I know right now, uh, certain locations, you know, they're, they're doing the store pickup and they're bringing it out to you. And some of them, I think you're allowed to go inside, but they kind of walk around with you and everything. But like I said, I don't know when you can just kind of generally just go inside at any specific time or anything like that. So if any of you guys have heard that, uh, let me know in the comments below. But like I said, though, we'll quickly head on the computer to check out uh, what Best Buy is advertising this week. 
But taking a look here on uh, Best Buy's weekly ad, like I was saying, though, the big thing coming out today was the uh, Jaws uh, 4K Steelbook here. And here's a closer look at that one. It's definitely a very cool uh, Steelbook. Uh, the 4K wise, of the picture quality on this was great. But that one's uh, $24.99 for that one. The standard 4K is $19.99. And then um, uh, the Watchmen, they, it looks like they have a, they have a um, steelbook as well for this one, a limited edition steelbook for the Watchmen TV series. I've never seen any episodes of this one. So if you guys have seen this, let me know how this was. But this one is uh, $34.99 for that steelbook. They also have some other Best Buy exclusive steelbooks today, like Apollo 13. Uh, that one is uh, $19.99 for that one. There's also a Flash Gordon steelbook. This one, though, Keep in mind, this is coming out soon uh, from um, uh, Arrow Video. They're going to have a 4K edition to this one as well coming out, as well as a Blu-ray. But other than that, though, uh, all the other things I don't think will be in stores. Um, Parasite, that released today. I don't know if this one will be available in stores or not, but that came out on 4K for $19.99. This one, though, as well, keep in mind with this one, uh, uh, Criterion Collection is going to be putting out a special edition of this at some point. And Star Trek Short Treks, uh, that one is on $19.99 there. Uh, and then the standard uh, you know, edition of uh, Watchmen on Blu-ray is uh, $29.99. And then if they have it in person to pick up, uh, the Harley Quinn, the complete series on uh, DVD, that one is uh, $17.99 for that one. Into the Burger King drive-thru we go. Hi, can I help you? Hi, so I need to get a, uh, a Burger King Whopper with extra cheese. Oh, sorry, double cheeseburger plain, please. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so, and then a... Um, a large fry, a order of the chicken fries, and I actually have a coupon for those the, for the uh, chicken fries okay. and a large. Can I get the coupon number first? Oh uh, yeah, that's a uh, nine six three nine. Okay. Anything else? And then uh, the other thing was a small onion ring. Okay. And then the uh, Hershey Sunday pie. And then only, and then just um. Two sweet and sour sauce and one barbecue sauce, please. Anything else? And that was everything. 11, 7 years total. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Into Tony's Mexican food we go. Hi, can I take your order? Hi, so I just need to get a burrito with just um, eggs, potatoes, and cheese. And that was everything. Thank you. Thank you. Into the KFC drive through we go. Thank you for sitting KFC. How can I help you? Hi, so I need to just get uh, six breasts original, please. Six breasts and original? And, yeah, and that was everything. Okay, stay out of window. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Into the Panda Express drive through we go. Thank you. Hi, how can I help you today? Hi, so I just need to get a um, medium order of a uh, side order of chow mein. Uh-huh. And then a um, medium order of the um, fried rice. Okay. And two orders of the veggie spring rolls. Okay. Uh, and then uh, three sides of sweet and sour sauce. Okay. And some um, um, soy sauce, please. Oh, okay. And, and, that, that's what order? and that was everything. Would you like to make a donation for the HS Hospital? Yeah, you can round up to Did 12. You say three orders for the veggies, or uh, two orders? Uh, two orders of that, please, but three. And three sweet and sour sauce. Yeah, that's right. And some soy okay. sauce. Three and orders. yeah, you can round up to 12 for thank the. Thank you, ma'am. No problem. All right, then help us to make a Okay, thank you. We got ma'am again today, so. <laughs> so anyway, though, guys, that was off my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, leave me comments below letting me know, you know, what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K, if you guys ended up picking up anything today. Let me know as well anything new that you guys have watched on streaming or on TV or anything like that. I did watch the uh, Netflix movie, um, you know, Netflix original movie, The Wrong Missy with David Spade, you know, David Spade and Lauren Lap Lapkus. I believe that's, hopefully I'm saying her name right. I actually thought that was a really funny movie. That's definitely, if you guys want to watch something funny right now, 
now would be definitely something I'd recommend you guys check out. It's not like the all-time greatest or anything, but sometimes you just really want to watch something like goofy and funny. And I, and I did think there was some definitely some funny stuff in it. I also really loved uh, Rob Schneider's part in the movie as well. Like he, Rob Schneider is always great and like playing like these ridiculous parts, and he's playing like a ridiculous character in this one. Uh, so if you guys have seen that one too, let me know what you guys uh, thought of that. And like I said, let me know anything that you guys have been watching on TV or streaming or anything like that that you recommend to check out. And also too, let me know what you guys thought of all the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that are viewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen them, or what you guys thought of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though guys, thanks so much for watching and subscribing. Now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. Now before we get to the reviews though, I have to show, uh, you know, Herb, I got the bucket of KFC chicken and I hope today it's decent sized. And I, you know, I got you some KFC chicken, Lulu. You love KFC chicken. Here, yeah, see, you can you can inspect the breasts Ooh, and make sure they're a decent size. Take a look. You said Hold the because you saw it earlier and you said it seems though. smaller though, so that's worrisome. I hope it's not hope not in there. So hopefully they're all in there, though. That's worrisome. They may be six small ones. Let's see. They seem. They, they, when I peeked at them, they looked. I mean, well, that one's fairly. That meaty. seems like a decent one. Yeah. What do you think, Lulu? Nah, no, half, kind of kind of small. Half ass small one. Yeah. That one's That's a little okay, medium. medium. Uh, you were saying though that you feel like their their breasts their, keep getting their smaller and smaller. Are not small. Look oh, and see so, that's oh. when that's split like that. You know what that means? What does that mean? Dry. Uh oh. Dry and chewy. <laughs> oh no, Lulu. Oh, it's going to be dry and chewy. Oh look, there's a good one. Oh, that's a better one. So, so. it looks like. That one's that okay. Oh, oh, so, right. uh, Let me show them to Lulu, though. Oh, look what you got. You want to take a look, Lulu? Yeah. Look, Lulu. KFC check on. Yeah. What do you think? You want to smell them? Oh, what do you think? Oh, nice. Yes. And nice. some people say, don't worry, we give them to her afterwards. She doesn't just eat them like this. You have to take them off and oh, cut yeah, them into no. small pieces and oh, everything. No. I, I, you I, have to do all sorts of stuff. You have to take stuff. all of the skin off. And yeah, some people are like, oh, it's not nice to put it right in her face, but oh, she, no. No, she wouldn't even know what to do with it like no, that. No, it's too early in the day. No, it's, she won't eat now she anyway. Doesn't eat, she doesn't eat till about four. And yes. then she eats again at what? Right, Lou? Uh, yes, Lou. We're talking about like you over there. Maybe 1 a.m. Yes. She's, she's on a very strange She's got weird schedules, too. This whole house schedule. does. Yeah, we're, we're kind of weird, that's yes. for sure. But oh well, that's all right. Yes. So. But now to the reviews. Now, the first ones I got here are all from Arrow Video. Now, this is a movie which I have watched so many times. I remember renting this one all the time as a little kid. And actually, some of the earliest horror movies that I remember seeing were the movies that she hosted because I used to go to Blockbuster and rent the VHS tapes of the movies that she hosted. Stuff like um, The Brain That Wouldn't Die. That was a tape that I always remember renting the most. I always loved that, you know, that she hosted. But this is the um, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. And it's basically, though, you know, she started out doing the, the Elvira character, Cassandra. Sandra Peterson did the Elvira character hosting, you know, like super cheesy horror movies and low budget horror movies. And she would kind of be like negative that she was having to watch these bad movies and was kind of always kind of talking trash about the films and everything. But in this, in the film though, it's basically her playing her character, Elvira, hosting a TV show, hosting the movies and everything. And in the beginning of the film though, she gets a brand new boss that comes in and he's a super sleazy guy. And she ends up uh, basically doesn't want to work for this guy. She ends up quitting. At the same time though, she found out that she just, you know, inherited something from her great aunt that died. She never knew about this great aunt. So she ends up basically going to, you know, kind of out in the middle of nowhere to figure, you know, and to, to find out what she inherited, which, you know, she finds out in the beginning of the movie is a house, a dog, and then this uh, spell book, uh, this book with recipes. And that, you know, the aunt's brother, you know, he wants to get this spell book, uh, you know, because he knows it has all kind of powers and stuff. And of course, Elvira doesn't know this. And it's just basically about her with him trying to get this spell book and then all the kind of go ons that are in the town. Everyone kind of like, because uh, Elvira really stands out in this town. And it's kind of like her with the town's folks and all the kind of problems in the town. It's a really, really fun movie. Like I said, I have watched this movie so many times throughout the years. Uh, this one looks great here on Blu ray. It has a brand new restoration for a 4K scan from original film elements on here. It has an introduction to the film by the director. It has a 2017 commentary track on here with the director, uh, you know, hosted by Fangoria uh, editor uh, Tony Tapone, as well as a 2017 commentary track with Patterson, um, you know, Lind Lindquist, you know, who's, um, you know, the webmaster and judge of the U.S. US uh, TV series The Search for the ne Next Elvira. So I remember watching that one when that aired. I think it was like 
filmed on like the Queen Mary boat. I remember that. I don't know how many, if it went for a couple of seasons or not, but I remember watching one of the seasons of that one. Also has on here a brand new uh, version, a uh, newly revised version of the 2018 feature length documentary in the making of the film. It has some stuff on here about the special effects. It has a theatrical trailer and TV spoiler, uh, you know, TV uh, uh, teaser trailers on this one. I'll show you guys though a look inside. Also really cool uh, slip cover on this one. But inside though, it has, you know, the reversible artwork this is the original uh, movie poster artwork, as well as a booklet in here, which has stuff about the production, uh, stills from the film, all that kind of stuff here. But if you guys have never seen this movie, really, really fun uh, you know, movie. I always have really loved this one. Uh, the next one here is from uh, you know, Arrow Video as well. Like I said, the first uh, handful are all uh, Arrow Video releases. And this is um, the brand new uh, you know, collector's edition here of 16 Candles, John Hughes' uh, 16 Candles, another movie which I have watched so many times. What's really cool, though, about this release is it has on here, though, you know, the uh, theatrical version. Of the, it's a brand new 4K scan from the original negative, but it has the theatrical version as well as an extended version, which features an additional cafeteria scene. And it's, the scene is newly restored in HD, so it's not just like a standard definition scene. It's restored in HD. And I remember that scene, though. Uh, they would play that scene, the, the cafeteria one, uh, you know, in some of the TV edits of the movie. So that's really cool that that's included on here. And also has on here as well the alternate home video soundtrack prepared for VHS and Laserdisc because when the movie came to VHS and Laserdisc they had to change some of the music because of the rights issues and that kind of stuff I think they had to do the same thing too I believe with Weird Science and there's a couple other movies that have been like that where they had to change the music for the VHS releases and stuff so it also uh, so like I said it has an alternate version to watch it with that uh, soundtrack on here so that's kind of cool to have that included as well also has on here though a brand new uh, interview on here with some of the actors on this one uh, interview on here with supporting actor John Capelo uh, interview on here with the camera operator, uh, you know, interview on here with the composer. So lots and lots of features, a theatrical trailer, TV spots, radio spots. Uh, but if you guys don't know the film, it's basically, though, it stars Molly Ringwald, and it's basically, though, about her, and on her birthday, she's turning 16, and, you know, you know, basically everyone in the house, her parents have forgotten, because, you know, was it her sister, you know, her, you know, her older sister is getting married, uh, and, like, they're all, like, busy planning for that, so they basically forget to wish her a birth happy birthday, and it's kind of just all about Molly Ringwald's character in school, and, like, the geeky, you know, Anthony Michael Hall's character that likes her, and, you know, the, the, um, you know, the guy that she, Molly Ringwald's character likes, and it's it, it's just a really, really fun uh, movie. I, I, I have watched like I said, I've watched this movie so many times. It's one of those movies I feel like everyone has seen, but it's like it's uh, this is a great edition of the film. Like I said, it's so many great features on this one as well, and a great transfer on this. And I'll show you guys though a look inside. It has a booklet in here, which has some stuff like I said about the production uh, stills from the movie. Here's Anthony Michael Hall's character in the movie. I don't know his, his character is great in the movie. Also the uh, foreign exchange character as well in the movie. I always loved his character as well in the movie. But it's a really really a uh, fun. Uh, movie. The next one here is from Arrow Video as well. This is another movie that I always have really liked. It's a great brand new edition here. Uh, this is uh, Lucky McGee's uh, film, uh, The Woman, which stars Pollyanna McIntosh. Now, this film is a sequel to the movie uh, Offspring. Now, it's one of those things where if you guys have not seen Offspring, it doesn't matter, though. It's kind of it's kind of like um, it connects to it because also after this film came the film Darling, which is like a direct sequel to this one. So if you guys are, are a fan of this movie uh, and you have not didn't know about that, definitely check out The Offspring as well and also check out Darling. That one came out about a year or so ago, or maybe a little less than a year ago. But this is basically, though, about Pollyanna McIntosh's character, who was, you know, in the first film was a cannibal that was living kind of out in kind of like a residential, residential kind of area, essentially, and kind of like out there with like a whole tribe of these cannibals. And basically, though, she's the only surviving member of this group, and she gets kind of, um, you know, the, this family that lives out in the middle of these, like, of the woods, kind of, the, the father sort of spots her, and she's like, acting her character is really like almost like living like an animal out in the woods doesn't and never really been around people or doesn't like talk or anything like that and he basically kidnaps her and chains her up and it's kind of he's like doing like an experiment of seeing if he can try and like you know uh, civilize her and everything and like the the wife played by you know uh, Angela Bates you know who is also in uh, May because Lucky McGee also directed May, 
uh, May, which is another great film. Uh, basically, though, she's like, what are you doing? What, why are you tying, tying her up? And it's like a whole weird thing that's going on. But this is a great movie. I would definitely recommend you guys check this one out. On here, though, it has a brand new 4K restoration, su supervised and approved by Lucky McKee, the director. It has on here, though, a new commentary track on here with the director. It has on here a brand new commentary on here with uh, Pollyanna McIntosh. A commentary on here with critic uh, Scott Weinberg. Uh, archival commentary on here with the director. A brand new 75 minute uh, making of on here with a behind the scenes making of documentary. So lots and lots of features on this one. But like I said, it's another one. I really love this movie and a great uh, new release on this one. And I'll show you guys though a look inside at this one here as well. And this one has a booklet in here which has some stills from the movie, stuff about the cast and the production and all that kind of stuff as well. And the other one here from um, Arrow Video, and I just watched this one uh, tonight. This is one, uh, both these ones, I had never seen these films before. And this is, this is um, from Nico Mastros. You know, he, I always feel like I'm saying his name wrong. Mastrokas, Mastrokas, you know, who did Isle of Death and um, uh, lots and lots of different movies. I always like his stuff. Um, was this, was this the one that he, he didn't direct this one. He produced, um, this one, the other one that he directed. I, 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 hopefully, I'm not mixing this one up. Yeah, this is the one that he didn't. Yeah, he didn't direct this one. He was a producer of this one, and this is called Blood Tide. And James Earl Jones is in this movie. He was like great in this film. Like I, it was like kind of a different kind of role for him. And I, I loved his character in this movie. This is basically though about this guy who's going with his um, new wife to this island. Basically, like they were, they just got married and they're kind of on like a honeymoon, sort of. But at the same time they're trying to find the one sister because his sister kind of went and vanished in this island. The sister is played by the um, actress who was in Body Double who was the one that like he was spying on uh, at the one point and he kind of goes underneath like the, the kind of the bridge and he's like kissing the one underneath the kind of like in the tunnel system in the movie uh, but she was in this film and but basically though this island is like um, in, the, in, the, in the, the you know this Greek island and basically it has this history to it where they're like sacrificing uh, you know a virgin to like the island. You see in the beginning of the movie and basically though the one sister has gone missing there and like she's there with James Earl Jones's character and James Earl Jones's character is like uh, you know a girlfriend and he's there kind of uh, like doing some like diving expedition to try and like find uh, he says it's like sea sponges or something but he's actually looking for like um like this cave system he found where of course you know in the beginning of this movie though he ends up dynamiting this thing and blowing open the this cave system that lets out this kind of creature and it's but it's essentially it's about this creature on this island and you know it's been awakened and it's going in like and killing people on the island essentially but it's actually a pretty cool creature I, like I said I really like this movie and this also stars Martin Cove uh, in, in this movie as well but I really really like this one a lot like I said I had never heard of this one it was a really cool movie this one has on here though a brand new 4K scan from the original camera negative on this one. It has a brand new audio commentary track on here with the, with the director of the film, moderated by um, Michael Felsher. Uh, brand new uh, you know, newly filmed interview with producer and co-writer Nico Mastrokas. So, so he was the co-writer of this one as well. And I'll show you guys a look though. Inside, this one has a booklet which has some stuff about the production. A really, really great location. You know, He, he, he always would shoot his projects in really great uh, locations. These, these, Greek, these small Greek islands and they're just amazing spots. Island of, Island of Death was shot in one of them as well. I don't know if it's the same island or not, but really, really cool locations, though. And the next one here is from Arrow Video as well. And this is also a film here by Nico Mastrokas. But this one, though, and hopefully I'm saying his name wrong, but he was the director of this one. And this is a movie here called The Wind, which stars um, Meg Foster, you know, who was in uh, They Live, as well as, um, you know, this has uh, Wings Hauser, who was in uh, Vice Squad. Uh, Steve Railsback is in the film. But this is basically, though, about Meg Foster's character, who's like this writer who's really popular. And she's like going to the Greek isle islands to work on her next book. She kind of wants to get away from the boyfriend and everything and kind of like you know just ha sort of have like you know to ha you know kind of be away from everything just to work on the new book so she's kind of like taking this trip to do the writing and uh, when she gets there though the guy who's like renting the place to her he's like showing off the place and saying you know this is how it is and he's kind of a little strange this guy but right when he leaves uh you know um 
Wing, Wings Hauser's character uh, shows up, and he's kind of the guy who takes care of the property. He like uh, brings marketing items and food and stuff to the house and everything, and he's like dropping off some groceries and stuff. And he's like got like dirt all over his sweater, and he's kind of acting strange. And th 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 that night though, right when she gets there, uh, she notices though Meg Foster's character notices like him out there like he's digging, and this is in the very first part of the movie, and she ends up going out there and seeing this body out there, and it's basically though it's like okay, so she. she She's, she's seen this and basically Wings, Wings Hauser's character is kind of coming after her trying to get into the house and it's like an intense crazy movie I really like this one a lot because it also deals with too, in the beginning of the movie the owner of the house says watch out for the wind, bad things happen in the wind and everything, it's a really really interesting movie, uh, great location, the same with you know with um, Blood Tide uh, this one didn't you know use the location as much as Blood Tide did but still a really really great location and setting for the movie on here though it has a brand new uh, restoration on here, approved by writer and director of the film it has a brand new uh, interview on here with the director it has the sounds of wind uh the complete soundtrack composed by Hans Zimmer and Stanley Myers as well as a collection of trailers for the other films by the director as well I'll show you guys a little look inside as well as the booklet it, ha it has like some stills from the movie about the production all that kind of stuff as well on this one and the other ones here are from Arrow Video as well I want to let you guys know uh, these ones were available as well this is a uh, Russian film here called Why Don't You Just Die and this is basically though one of those movies where as the movie goes along you find out more about what's going on and it's basically though about it starts off with this guy holding a hammer behind his back knocking on the door of this uh, this uh, house and he's like like acting like he's going to you know kill this guy with this thing and it's basically though uh, it's his girlfriend's uh, parents' house, and she's sending him there to kill the father. And you find out more about why and what exactly is going on. But it's basically, though, uh, you know, this father is not easy to kill. And it basically becomes this insane thing about them going after each other in this house. And it's like an absolutely intense, crazy movie. Uh, on here, though, this has, you know, a brand new interviews on here with author and film critic um, uh, Kim Newman exploring why don't you just die within the context of the long standing tradition of single camera location. It has exclusive behind the scenes footage from the film set, uh, four short films on here, theatrical trailer, and I'll show you guys a look inside as well. It has a booklet in here some stills from the movie, some stuff about the production, all that kind of stuff as well here. And the last one from uh, our, our video as well is one I want you guys to know was available. And it's a movie here called White Fire. And this one has stars uh, uh, Fred Williamson, you know, Fred the Hammer Williamson. And this one has a cool slip cover on this one as well. Like I said, just want you guys to know that this one was available. And this one has on here, though, feature length commentary track on here with critic Kat Ellinger. It has a brand new interview on here with the writer and director. It has a brand new interview on here with actor Fred Williamson. A uh, brand new interview on here with the editor. A uh, trailer on this one. And I'll show you guys, though, a look inside at this one as well. And this one here, here's a look at some stills from the movie, some stuff about the production, all that kind of stuff as well. But some really, really cool uh, new and recent uh, Arrow video releases here. Really glad to get to show you guys uh, these ones. Now, the next ones here are from uh, Shout Factory. And this one here is from uh, Shout Factory's uh, Scream Factory line. This is the brand new collector's edition here of Escape from L.A. You know, John Carpenter's Escape from L.A. And I actually have always kind of like, I, I, I always kind of like this one a little bit more than Escape from New York. As much as I really love Escape from New York, Escape from L.A. was the first one that I saw. Uh, you know, I saw this one when this first released. I think in like 2000. I mean, this came out. I mean, sorry, 1996. So I think I was like. Um, Maybe I'll go, like, was it 11 or something like that when I saw this one? I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember reading this one when this was, like, new. And how much I really like this movie. It's, you know, basically Snake Plissken's character. And now he's in L.A. because he's trying to get back this doomsday device that was stolen. Uh, you know, and he has to try and get it back. And he has to find the woman that has taken it. And I don't know, for something about the setting of this one and the way the movie flows and everything, I always kind of like this a little bit more. And this has, like, um, Steve Buscemi, uh, Stacey Keach is in the film. Uh, but Steve Buscemi's great in this movie. I don't know. It, it's got more of a fun kind of like, um, uh, almost like a more comedy aspect so like a, a, a goofy aspects kind of thrown in than the original because the original movie had a much more you know the, for the Escape from New York had a much more serious vibe this one though like I said I thought was a little bit more fun but this one has on here a brand new 4k scan for the original camera negative really really great transfer on this one has brand new interviews on here a uh, whole bunch of different stuff with like visual effects artists on here some of the actors a still gallery a TV spots theatrical trailer on this one also has a reversible artwork 
with the original uh, poster artwork for this movie here as well. But like I said, uh, if you guys have never seen this one, because you don't hear about this one as much. You always hear about Escape from you know New York, which like I said, is a great movie, but you don't hear about L.A. too much, and it's definitely worth checking out. And the next one here, now this is really cool. Uh, this is the uh, first 4K release here uh, from a Shout Factory Select title, and I'm, ho I'm hoping to Shout Factory for the Scream Factory line will start releasing some 4Ks as well. But this is the uh, uh, 4K edition here, which has the 4K and the Blu-ray and the collector's edition here from Shout Factory Select line of The Deer Hunter. Here, which is a great movie, a very, very sad film, though, but a great cast. It has Robert De Niro, John Cazell, uh, John Savage, Meryl, Meryl Streep, uh, Christopher Walken. But it's basically about Robert De Niro and, and his friends, and their, who have been friends for years upon years, and they basically work together at this steel mill. And it, there's great footage, too, about the steer, steel mill, like showing, like, sort of like views of it that you never really see in other kind of movies. Uh, you know, like, really detailed of how they were doing it, like, in the opening of this movie. But it's basically, though, about them, you know, knowing that they're going to be going away to uh, Vietnam. And essentially, though, um, you know, they're kind of planning for when they're going away and they're going to be doing this hunting trip before they leave. And, and it, But it's like a real, you know, serious epic character piece film because it deals with when they're in the war and then what happens there and the aftermath. And it's like I said, it's a really, really sad, but it's so well acted movie. It is so well put together. And I, it's one of those movies, too, which I had never actually seen before. So I finally have seen it. And I was really glad, too, to see it for the first time in 4K. And the thing, that too, is it's 4K it has HDR which the big thing with HDR is the contrast levels which means it has much more like darker levels to the darks and and like the, the you know the sh like the shades and everything it, it, I feel like it's just it just all all it gives it much more levels of the of, of shades and colors and everything is the big thing with the HDR but also uh, with 4k and I've said this a lot the big thing that I always notice so much as well is it's just a much much more v brighter vibrant picture and it, that's the way it really is with this film and on here though it has a brand new interview on here with John Savage and the producer on here, commentary track on here, the cinematographer, uh, deleted and extended scenes, interview on here with film critic uh, David Thompson, a theatrical trailer, a still gallery on this one. And this one here is from Shout Factory as well. This one has a Blu-ray and a DVD, and this is uh, Three Christ. And this one has a great cast in this movie. This has uh, Richard Gere, Peter Dinklage, uh, Peter Dinklage, Walton Goggins, uh, Bradley Whit Whiteford, who I always think of Bradley Whiteford from, no matter what, I always think of him from Billy Madison. He's been in like so many great movies, but but like I always think of him as the one who's trying to take the company, you know, and Billy Madison. I feel like for, forever, I was always think of him from that. And this is basically, though... This is based on a true story about Richard Gere's character who's going to a mental hospital to uh, kind of doing like a study on people with like delusional person, like per, like sort of like their delusional personalities and they believe they're certain things and like kind of like delusions and things like that. And it's three guys there who all believe that they're Jesus. And they basically, you know, he's going there and kind of do a study on them. And what he, want, what he wants to do, though, is get them all together and like all talk to them together and kind of see how they act. And, and it's kind of it's a really, really like... Like, um, well acted, like I said, character piece though about him going through these studies, and then there, you know, you find out more about them and everything, and they all, and like when they all are together on screen, though, when you get Walt, you know, um, Walton Goggins, Peter Dinklage, and Bradley Whiteford together, it's great. Like I, like I said, this is a really, really well acted uh, character piece one here. I definitely recommend you guys check this one out. Like I said, this one here is called The Three Christ. And the next one here is from Warner Brothers. They sent out a free copy of this one. Lee, guys, know this one was available. Uh, same with the next one here as well. But this is one I was really interested in seeing, and I heard a lot of really good things about this, and it's Mortal Kombat Legends uh, Scorpion's Revenge. This is the 4K Ultra HD edition, which includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, and the digital code. But this one, though, it really is a very, very brutal movie. Like, the animation, uh, the, the the gore and stuff in it, it's like, a, it's an absolutely intense. I, I thought that, because you know, it's rated R, uh, but it's really, really, like... Uh, uh, it's definitely because like the original Mortal Kombat games, you know, I think you had to put a code in for the original ones to have all the blood and everything. But the later ones, I, I think they were just automatically would tur be turned on. I always remember having to put that blood code in to play the game back in the day. Uh, and I was always mad if I, you know, forgot it or didn't have it written down or something. Um, but this is basically, though, about how the character of Scorpion came to be. Because in the beginning of the film, though, like the village is of, you know, Scorpion's character was destroyed and people were killed. And it's basically, though, he ends up getting killed as well, but he ends up getting brought back to life. And 
And he's basically told that he has to fight in this challenge to kind of avenge things. And it's basically, though, it's kind of a remake, though, of the first Mortal Kombat film about the group of people coming together for the fight and everything, essentially. But like I said, this is really, really well done. If you guys are a fan of Mortal Kombat, the games or the films or anything like that, I would definitely say this is worth checking out. Like I said, it's a really, really intense, but really, like, um, like really beautiful animation. And the 4K on this one looks great. This has on here, though, from Epic Game to Extreme Animation. Uh, the weapons wardrobe and um, world of Mortal Kombat Legends on here about the sound design, a filmmaker commentary track on this one. This one here is from um, uh, Warner Brothers as well. They sent out a free copy as well of this one to let you guys know this is available. And this is the new DC Universe movie, uh, Justice, League Do uh, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. And this one here is the follow-up to the last Justice League film. And this is basically, though, about all the Justice League having to work together. Because of Darkseid, who is basically kind of like causing all sorts of the character of Darkseid is causing all sorts of these troubles, and kind of it's like they all have to kind of work together, and they have to get get people together that they you know um, wouldn't know, that maybe not even able to get along too well with to get together because it's kind of like they need as many people as possible to to help take down a uh, Darkseid, uh, and you know it also has the character of uh, Constantine in this, which I believe Con the Constantine character was in the last film, I I, I believe so I'm not 100 certain, but I. Think think so but on here though this also has um the dc sh uh, showcase short adam strange as well as it has a filmmaker content on track on here it has a sneak peek of dc universe's next animated movie uh, superman man of tomorrow it has uh, three uh, bonus cartoons from the dc vault as well but 4k wise though both these ones look great on 4k so if you guys have 4k capacities would definitely recommend these ones on 4k and the big thing too that i always noticed with 4k too is animation always looks really really good and but and both of these ones look great on 4k the next one here is from disney and this is the um uh the second film uh you know second film in the zombies series and this is uh, zombies uh, 2 and the first zombies movie was actually a pretty fun um, musical film and this is the follow-up though to meg donnelly's character who's um what was his the main character's name on here it's um Milo Malahan, Manahan. I'm hopefully I'm saying his name wrong, but Meg Donnelly. Basically, uh, it's set in a world where uh, zombies and you know would go to school with kids that weren't zombies, but they would be like that's how the first movie was, and they were separated between like these like to keep like the zombies on one side and then the people that weren't zombies on the other because they were worried that the zombies would attack them and everything. But in the first movie though, they end up kind of becoming uh, Meg Donnelly's character dates a zombie, and then it kind of changes everything in the school, and now they're accepting and everything. But now though werewolves have come to the school and now the the zombies and the humans that are not zombies are afraid of the werewolves and it's kind of like the werewolves are kind of coming there and causing all sorts of problems they're kind of acting like um kind of like fonz a little bit like uh, arthur fonzarelli's kind of characters a little bit like and kind of like trying to like scare them and everything and causing all kinds of problems i i i like this movie if you guys are fan of the last movie i would definitely recommend it it's a fun um, musical uh disney you know horror uh comedy it's not it's got horror aspects in it but it's for kids though but it has like a uh uh, you know, um, a goosebumps kind of feel too, with a little bit like the stylized look of it. But on here it has blue, uh, lots of different features. It has bloopers, deleted scenes, has a music video on here, uh, dance tutorials, as well as uh, sing-alongs on this one. The next one here is from uh, RLJ uh, Entertainment, and this is um, you know a Shutter original series, and this is Creep Show season one. Now this cover uh, also grow, uh, glows in the dark as well. And we're taking a quick look here at the glow in the dark function here on the um, the Blu-ray, and you see like the TV glows in the dark. It says Creep Show. The name glows in the dark. Even on the side, it says Creep Show. It's hard to see here, but really cool glow in the dark one here for this. But this show, though, I I had Shutter for a little while. This also includes in here a 30-day trial for Shutter. But I got Shutter for a little while to watch this show, and I I've always been a huge fan of the Creep Show movies, the first and second film. I think I, I I've watched the second movie a little bit more because I love that segment on the raft. That's like in in I, my opinion of like any anthology movies, uh, like horror anthologies. I feel like that raft segment was like one of the best. Creep Show three, though, I always felt like Creep Show three kind of felt like almost like a TV kind of, almost like Afraid of the Dark or Goosebumps or something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, but not not in any way near as good. But the third one, it always kind of had like, it was like, it wasn't great, but it was you could still watch it. It was still watchable in a way. But this series, though, definitely has a very similar feeling to the second movie a little bit more, I would say. Uh, and there's some really great uh, segments on here because it's basically, you know, um, each episode is... Um, 
I think it's 40 minutes long because each episode has two stories in it and like one of them was like this girl who has a dollhouse and like the in the dollhouse though weird there's, there's like a weird severed head in the dollhouse and then weird things are happening in there uh one of them too is like this guy who's like in a suitcase he's all like cranked up and he and he's you know basically he's like gives money to people and he's in the suitcase kind of like a genie in the suitcase i like this show i it, and there's a lot of features on this one as well because it has on here cast and crew interviews behind the scenes footage uh, easter eggs feature Red, commentary tracks on here with cast and crew it also has a comic art uh, booklet in here as well you see it's like the um comic version of the you know the show and everything in this one so it's a really cool little uh thing that's included in this one and it is a uh, three uh disc set here but like i said if you guys are a fan of the creep show films i would definitely recommend you guys check this one out here and like i said really cool uh glow in the dark cover on this one as well the next ones here are from, uh, you know, uh, from IFC. This is a movie called uh, One BR, which, you know, means one bedroom. This is about this girl who ends up moving to L.A. Uh, kind of for, like, a change. She ends up moving there, and, her, and she kind of, like, left her family behind. And the parents are like, why'd you leave and everything? And she moves, she finds this new apartment complex. It looks like a perfect kind of place. It's like a one, it's like it's a one bedroom place. And the people in there, though, kind of seem a little bit nosy and kind of weird. A little bit the way they're acting, they're kind of off and they're kind of one of those places too where they're all like talking to each other and you're like oh no i wouldn't want to move this place these people would really be bothering you about things it's kind of like that kind of place but she moves in there and the second she gets in there she starts hearing weird noises in the wall and everything and you, you kind of think oh is this going to be like a haunted house movie or something but then like it you know 30 minutes in this movie it becomes something totally different and has sort of sort of vibes a little bit to like martyrs a little bit i like i said i don't really want to say anything else too more about this because i don't know if in the back if it says exactly what happens on here or not i don't think it does because she's like um but she's like getting like when she moves in there too she's getting like weird sort of threats about having a pet in the house and all these sort of things but it's basically though uh it, it makes a big 180 about 30 minutes in where you think it's one thing and then it becomes something totally different and you know um i actually i thought this was actually pretty interesting it was like a, a, you know a very different kind of movie and i liked it it was very unexpected with what what happens in this movie it's totally not what you're expecting to happen uh, on this one on the here feature wise though it has a cute Q&A from the world premiere at the Fantasia Film Festival in 2019. Has an interview on here, uh, you know, uh, uh, audio interviews, uh, uh, screencast audio interview from Nightmare Film Festival, as well as a trailer on this one. This one here is from IFC Films as well. Now, this movie was made a number of years ago. I think it was 2009 is when it was made, but I don't know if it ever released before on Blu-ray, or maybe it was only ever on DVD. I, that's one I can't, I don't know for sure, but this is directed by Nicholas Wending Refn, you know, who went on after this movie, like, a, I think it was probably about a year later or two years later you know he directed drive and only god forgives i really like his movies and this is a movie here called Valhalla: a rising which stars um, mads milkinson this is basically though set like in the Viking era, and it's basically though um, Mads Mikkelsen's character is kind of kept held captive by these Vikings, and he's basically kind of being forced to fight these like brutal deaths, like fight people to the death, and these like super brutal, and it's like these, and, and you know the way Nicholas, Nicholas Wending Refn uh, shoots his stuff, he uses all kinds of crazy like lighting and uh, like the locations of this is like, amazing, like kind of in the middle of nowhere location is like amazing. The, where they shot this and it's just these brutal things and it's basically though uh mads milkson's character is kind of like essential for this uh this group that's kidnapped him essentially or keeping him hostage to survive because he's so powerful with being able to like take out these people that you're like how is he doing this so it's a really really great but a really really brutal intense movie definitely would recommend uh you guys check this out like i said glad to finally see this one because i had heard about this for years but I, I don't know for sure if it ever had a physical release in the u.s or not though and this one here is from 101 Films. It's a movie here called uh, Pandemonium. And this is basically, though, about, like, it's all set kind of in an office building, kind of like, um, sort of like an office space kind of place. But instead of, like, being like a, like a one floor place it's like a big kind of complex and it's kind of like the ones where it's like these sort of weird bosses and stuff that are kind of like kind of inappropriate acting and stuff like that and uh basically one character ends up getting into like the higher level of the of the office there and he gets like up with the bigger bosses and they're all kind of having this sort of celebration party at night and they kind of hire these girls to come there at night and and all these kind of things and basically though someone has come in there wearing this crazy big mask uh, and going and basically hunting down the people 
Marvel in there. It's like a, a you know old school a slasher movie set in this office complex. Of it's kind of like exactly who is this coming after them? Because like I said, it's wearing a mask, so you don't know who it is. Or if it's somebody that's kind of mad that maybe they didn't get the position that the one guy got, you don't exactly know what's going on. But I say if you guys like you know uh, slasher films, especially ones like set like in office buildings and those kind of things, uh, I definitely recommend you guys check this out. Like I said, this one here is called, called Pandemonium. Uh, the next one here is from the uh, Criterion Collection. This is a movie. This is um, directed by uh, Paul Dano. It's his first film that he directed because he's you know most known for being an actor. And I thought he did a really good job on this film. It's a movie here called Wildlife, which stars uh, Carrie Mulligan and Jake Gyllenhaal. And this is um. It's basically, though, about uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character who, like, ends up losing his job, and then he ends up, like, getting this job to, like, fight fire, so he ends up kind of having to leave the house, and, like, when he leaves, though, it kind of throws the house for a loop because he's, like, gone a lot for this, and, like, it's kind of about, like, the son and, the, and, and you know, the, the, with the mother and, like, them kind of dealing with how they're going to survive with him being gone and, like, the changes. Every, everything is, like, uh, going, kind of not going great in their lives and everything and it's kind of her trying to have to take the reign of what she's going to do and it's a really really well acted character piece like I thought the acting here was great uh, Carrie Mulligan you know Carrie Mulligan did a great job the one I was just talking about Drive Carrie Mulligan was in uh, that film on here though it has a brand new 2k uh, you know two, new 2k digital master on here it has a new interview on here with Paul Dano as well as a screenwriter and actress uh, you know actors Carrie Mulligan and Jake Gyllenhaal and the cinematographer on this one it has on here a film at Lincoln Center Conference conversation from 2018 with Paul Dano, a novelist on this one, Richard Ford. Also, then there is a booklet as well, uh, you know, about the movie and some uh, stills and, you know, um, character photos and that kind of stuff. The main son in here was the kid who was in uh, Better Watch Out as well as uh, The Visit. And the next one here is from Well Go USA. This is a movie here with um, that has Val Kilmer in it and Anna Lynn, Lynn McCord. And it, this is, like I said, from Well Go USA. And it's called A Soldier's Revenge. And this is basically, though, about this. This is set during the Civil War. And it's basically a soldier who is now a bounty hunter. And, you know, he's basically going after hunting people down and coming after people and everything. And the people, who, like, send him to get low after and everything. But event in this movie, though, uh, these two kids end up showing up at his door. And there's another movie I saw that was kind of like that about, like, a kid that I can't remember what it was called but like he comes on with like a and gets like help from one guy like a, a similar kind of concept but they these kids have to try and get back to their mother and he has to try and kind of help them so he's like deciding he's going to keep them safe so it's kind of him going and like kind of almost like getting like doing like a, a positive instead of all these killings he's doing he's like doing a positive thing to try and keep them safe and uh you know val kilmer's character is one of the kind of characters that they come across in this movie i thought if you guys are a fan though of western movies though like i said one let you guys know that this one was available and like i said it's called a soldier's revenge uh the next ones here are all from uh, moviezing.com uh, and i have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price this is also from the warner archive this is a show as i had always wanted to see and i don't think this show really ever had like a big syndication run and i don't know how many seasons this went for but like I said, I don't remember ever really seeing this syndicated on TV or anything like that. And it's a show called uh, Head of the Class. It's the complete first season. And what's interesting about this show is uh, I feel like if this show didn't exist, we might not have uh, like Keenan and Kel. Because, um, you know, a lot of people from Keenan and Kel, you know, um, were, were from this. Like, um... You know, like Dan Snyder, uh, you know, came, you know, was like behind head, in, you know, uh, Keenan Kell, as well as Brian Robbins, who's on the show, who's now the head of, um, you know, uh, Nickelodeon. So it's kind of like this show is kind of like what had a lot to do with like a lot of early Nickelodeon shows, like if these this group didn't come together. Because there's a couple other people, I think, I think um, um, there was one or two other people, I think, that might have been on, one of them that directed, I think Robin Givens, Gribbins, Givens, I think she directed some episodes, unless I'm totally wrong about that, I think she directed some episodes of Keenan. Kel. But this is basically, though, about a substitute teacher who comes to be a substitute at this, like, gifted and talented kind of program class where these kids are, like, really super smart. And they kind of have all their kind of, they're trying to, like, you know, because they're not, they're kind of like the nerds of the school, too. They aren't really popular. And the teacher kind of comes there and kind of, kind of trying to help them. And they kind of like the teacher because he kind of, like, gets along with them. And he's not as, like, strict and, and like, all about teaching as much as some of the other teachers that they have had because he's kind of filling in for one of the teachers who's been away but it, of course so he ends up becoming a main teacher on the show so he stays there and everything uh, it's kind of like that show Drexel's class they made too uh, and also um, there's a couple other ones about like teachers in school but I like this I'm, I'm glad I got to finally see this one I hope they continue releasing other seasons I don't know how many seasons this went for though uh, this one is from the Warner Archive as well 
This is a show called Pennyworth, the complete fourth, uh, complete complete first season here on Blu-ray. This is basically a prequel to, um, you know, the super. I mean, to the um, bat, not Superman, to the Batman uh, universe. And it's basically though about, you know, the character of Alfred and like what Alfred did before he worked for Bruce, you know, Wayne's father, and eventually, you know, he was Bruce Wayne's butler. Uh, but he's basically though uh, worked in like the Secret Service kind of soldier, like he was an SAS soldier. And he's like doing security and basically he becomes the security officer and he works for Bruce Wayne's father. And it's kind of about him, uh, the early, like I said, the early stages of kind of what Bruce Wayne's father, you know, had done and kind of what inspired his son in, in, a, in a sense. But it's basically, though, him going and stopping bad guys, you know, it, it's it's an interesting show. It's like an interesting, different kind of take on the whole character and everything. And to see the Alfred character have its own spinoff is actually kind of interesting, though. Uh, the, this one here. It's from MovieZing.com as well, and this is also from Sony. And this is the um, the Blu-ray here, a Radio Flyer, which stars, you know, um, you know, directed by Richard Donner and stars uh, Elijah Wood. And I always liked this movie. Now, I'll say, though, as a kid, and even to this day, it's, this is a very sad movie. I remember as a kid when I would watch this movie, I would get so upset because it is, it is a really, really deep movie, especially for kids. It's like the subject matter and the, the ser seriousness of what's going on here, uh, of uh, how terrible that this one mother's boyfriend is like this alcoholic and he's like abusive and screaming and everything and basically though these kids uh, you know uh, basically are trying to get away from their mom's new boyfriend and it's just basically they kind of like go off and like these kind of like their own sort of adventures and they want to kind of put together this with a radio flyer you know um, thing that you drag like a um, the um, what would you what do you call that the um, uh, I don't, I'm, why do I think it blanking on the name uh, the the um, the radio flyer thing, whatever that thing exactly is, the um, thing you drag and stuff like that. You bring, put like things in if you were in the garden or something. Uh, a wheelbarrow, wheel, wheel barrel, essentially. And basically, though, they're trying to build a like airplane with it to kind of fly away from all of this. But it is a great but really, really sad movie. On here, though, it has a theatrical trailer. Uh, this one here is from uh, MovieZing as well, dot com as well. This is also from Random Media. And this is a movie here called Celebrity Crush. And this one here stars the main... Uh, you know Oliver Robbins, who was the kid in um, uh, he was the you know the bro the younger brother in Poltergeist, and uh, this is his first movie since then, I believe, and he directed this movie as well. I like this movie, and I even recognize the one comic book store in here because uh, it was shot in Florida, and I, I believe I saw like someone who was doing like, a vlog in Florida who went to that comic shop. I think it's like a real known shop that they filmed some of this at, but basically though he's playing a character kind of like a guy he's in, in, he was in Poltergeist, but instead he was in like this slasher movie about a killer clown. And, like, he's going and starts doing, like, convention signing and everything. And when he goes to one of the signings, though, he sees this one girl there who's, like, looking at him and, like, kind of staring. And he's thinking, oh, is she a fan? And she doesn't say anything to him. Then she see and he ends up seeing her again later. And then, you know, she's acting like she knows nothing about this movie. And, of course, though, they go out on a date and everything. And, of course, this woman is, like, nuts and basically kidnaps him and is trying to, like, get a sequel made and it's like it's like you know make a sequel with him and it's a, it's a really really crazy situation i i like this one a lot i thought this one was definitely worth checking out this one here is one that i was so excited this is from moviezing.com as well and it's also from itn uh, distribution but this is a movie i'm so glad that has a physical release now i saw this one a year or two back i got like a um like a, a, like a DVD, because back when it went on to, I think, uh, video on demand and stuff like that, I got like a, like a DVD that the, someone made for me so I could watch it. And now, but it was just like a like a watermarked one that had the thing that said like screening purposes and everything. So now to have a, a physical like copy of this one, I'm really glad, and I recommend re totally recommend you guys check this one out. It's a movie here called Parasites, which is directed by uh, Chad Farron, and it's basically basically though about a group of these these guys who are kind of out in L.A. and they get like they end up kind of wandering in this gang of these home this whole homeless gang, and they basically like go crazy they're like ballistic and he attacked them and the one guy survives and he's basically getting chased to the city by them and this is an, a totally like intense it has like vibes of like escape from new york and stuff like that I, I honestly though this is an absolute must watch like i said i'm so happy to have a copy of this one now because i really really like this one when i saw it and uh joe Pilato, he he's also in here as well who passed away a little a couple years back and i always was, was a huge fan of joe Pilato. always would talk to him at conventions a really nice guy you know he played 
Captain Rhodes in uh, Day of the Dead. But like I said, this is one I would definitely recommend you guys check out. And the next one here is from MovieZing.com as well. And this is also from Freestyle Digital Releasing. And this is a movie here called The Black Gloves. And this is about like this psychologist who's going and like studying about this kind of people who are seeing this kind of bird creature. The bird creature kind of reminds me of um, the movie, um, you know, uh, Stage Fright. The movie from the 80s, Stage Fright. Not the one that was had the same name from like a couple years back, but the, the 80s one. Which I always liked that movie, but the, the thing in there kind of has that same look. Like this owl, kind of owl-headed creature. And basically, though, he's going to study this. Because it's basically about this woman who's a ballerina and like the place had burned down. And then she kind of went kind of crazy and is living out in this kind of mansion out in the middle of nowhere with this one woman. And basically, she's kind of going there. The, the doctor, he goes there to kind of study this. And of course, though, he starts looking into this creature and trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And of course, it's like not a good thing. But it's a really interesting, kind of has like a hammer horror, a little bit kind of vibe to this one here. Like I said, this one here is called The Black Gloves. Uh, the next two ones here are from uh, Unearthed Films. And this is a really interesting movie here called What the Waters Left Behind. And this is... um was basically though about this town that was flooded it was like you know 30 years it was flooded in 1985 and it basically became flooded with water and then like when it the water like receded it basically ended up being this like this wasteland of all these things that are kind of left and like dead trees and destroyed buildings and everything and they're kind of going there to kind of like um do a documentary about this location and kind of film it and see what's there and kind of talk to people about it and everything but of course so they get there and the movie kind of plays though like uh, texas chainsaw massacre the way it's shot the way they're getting there they're in the kind of van that they're driving and everything it has and they even go to like a small like um convenience store along the way so it has that kind of vibe to it uh and of course so they get out there and it's and it's a text change on massacre kind of film so they're out there and there's somebody out there lurking around coming after them and it, it's it's a really really pretty cool movie it has on here though a uh, feature wise it has some um, film footage uh, photo galleries and trailers on this one this one here is from unearthed films as well and this is another one i'm so glad now has a blu release and i'm really so glad too that unearthed films has been releasing ryan nicholson's movies because they they're putting out uh, soon live feed which i always really like that movie they recently released a uh, famine and this is uh, Ryan Nicholson's uh, Gutter Balls. And Ryan Nicholson, you know, passed away a, a little while back, a few years back, a year or so back. Uh, he was a really nice guy. I, I used to talk to him ever since the days of uh, MySpace about films and about his movies. And I first found out about his movies on the Lloyd Kaufman's uh, Make Your Own Damn Movie thing when he was going to film sets. I, I love that. I wish Lloyd Kaufman put out another uh, DVD of those, like some new ones, because he would do vlogs and he would go to sets and film. Like, I don't know. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, but basically, that's, that's how I found out about uh, Ryan Nicholson's movies. And basically, though, uh, this is about people who are at this bowling alley. And um, it's basically someone is going after them, killing them in this bowling alley. And it's just, uh, it, it has amazing synth music in this movie. And it's a total super gory all Ryan Nicholson's movies were super gory because he was a special effects artist as well as a director so he really was great at doing these gory effects but this is a really really great movie so glad to have a uh, blu-ray of this one like I said cannot wait for the live feed blu-ray that's coming out soon as well and this has on here a commentary track on here with Ryan Nicholson behind the scenes making of photo gallery as well on this one and the next ones here are ones I just want you guys know were available this is here is from the MVD uh, marquee collection this is a Sylvester Sloan film here that he stars in called uh, I See you and on here though feature wise this has eight deleted scenes uh, interviews on here it has on here um you know photo gallery theatrical trailers on this one and underneath it here i'll show you guys a look inside I said this is the movie here called I See You. And this, like I said, this is from the, um, the um, you know, the MVD Marquee Collection. This one here is from um, VC, from uh, MVD as well as VCI Entertainment. This is uh, Bruce Lee is uh, Dynamo here. Like I said, just want you guys to know that this one here was available. It's a Bruce Lee film here. And this has on here a brand new 2K restoration for the original 35mm uh, English print. As well as a bonus 2K scan from the 16mm alternative cut. A commentary track on here with Kung Fu film fan uh, Michael Worth as well as it has some featurettes on here on um, on the cover artist on this one theatrical trailer uh, extra language tracks on here the Spanish language track and as well on this one and then this one here is um 
from uh, MVD, and this is called um, you know Emily Bront's uh, Weather Weathering Weathering Heights. Here, uh, this one is available as well here, and also this is another thing to let you guys know is available from MVD, and this is a uh, Bush Live in Tampa. Every time I think of the band Bush, I think of um because they did the songs in um, American Werewolf in Paris. I, I think like the theme song, so I always think of that. But this one here has the special edition, which has the Blu-ray, the DVD, and an audio uh, CD on this one as well. And the last one here is from uh, on you know from uh, Altered Innocence. It's a movie here called Home. And this is a, you know, uh, like um, a movie. It's basically, though, about this kid who's 17 years old who was just released from prison. And basically, though, he comes home from prison. It's essentially, though, him going and trying to not do bad things again he's kind of moving and everything to a different place and of course though he ends up kind of getting linked up with another group of kids and he's kind of starting to do uh bad things uh, you know again and trying to not do these destructive things but he's kind of getting into drinking and all this kind of stuff but it's a really really well done uh coming of age uh film here if you guys like stuff about like bad kids like or kids doing bad stuff kind of like the movie kids and uh bully and those kind of things it's similar in a sense to those ones uh here like i said this one here is called uh home here and this is from altered innocence anyway though that was all for the review portion of this video i know there's a lot of ones uh this video this is the longest one in a long time review wise a lot more things to review Anyway, though, guys, thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.